What is the key reason for transporting instruments as soon as possible after a procedure? A. To prevent loss or misplacement. B. To avoid the soil drying on the instruments. C. To reduce the workload on the sterilization department. D. To save storage space in the operating room. Answer B. To avoid the soil drying on the instruments. Who should be involved in the development of procedures for the safe transport of contaminated items? A. Only the Central Sterile Services Department, CSSD, staff. B. The Facilities Infection Prevention and Hazardous Materials Committees. C. Only the Hospital Administration Team. D. The Surgical Team Exclusively. Answer B. The Facilities Infection Prevention and Hazardous Materials Committees. Which organizations provide recommended practices for contaminated items transport? A. CDC and WHO. B. AAMI and AORN. C. FDA and OSHA. D. EPA and DOT. Answer B. AAMI and AORN. What should education on handling contaminated items include? A. Proper storage techniques only. B. The correct application and use of personal protective equipment, PP. C. Billing and coding for insurance claims. D. Mechanical repair of damaged instruments. Answer B. The correct application and use of personal protective equipment, PP. Why is interdepartmental teamwork crucial in the preparation and transport of instruments to central service? A. To ensure financial efficiency. B. To prevent damage to instruments only. C. To protect the facility's instruments and serve patients better. D. To comply with government regulations. Answer. C. To protect the facility's instruments and serve patients better. What is the consequence of not transporting instruments quickly after use? A. Increased risk of theft. B. Greater chance for biofilm formation. C. Immediate instrument malfunction. D. Decreased efficiency of the operating room. Answer. B. Greater chance for biofilm formation. Which group of individuals must be educated about the dangers associated with biohazard items? A. Only physicians and nurses. B. CS technicians, environmental service employees, couriers, and transport technicians. C. Patients and visitors only. D. Hospital administrative staff exclusively. Answer. B. CS technicians, environmental service employees, couriers, and transport technicians. What is recommended for pre-cleaning flexible fiber optic endoscopes? A. Soaking in high-level disinfectant. B. Suctioning water and enzymatic solution through the scope suction channel. C. Using alcohol wipes on the exterior surface. D. Sterilizing in an autoclave immediately after use. Answer. B. Suctioning water and enzymatic solution through the scope suction channel. How should sharps be handled to reduce the risk of injuries? A. Stored with other instruments. B. Placed in a separate container. C. Disinfected with a spray. D. Wrapped in linen. Answer. B. Placed in a separate container. What should be done with reusable linens after use? A. Sterilized immediately. B. Placed into an appropriate bag or container. C. Left on the instrument tray. D. Washed with instruments. Answer. B. Placed into an appropriate bag or container. When transporting contaminated items through the facility, which method minimizes the risk of cross-contamination? A. In an open cart. B. Using reusable containers without lids. C. In an enclosed cart. D. Carrying them by hand. 
Answer, C, in an enclosed cart. What is the primary purpose of keeping instruments moist after use and before cleaning? A, to prevent rust. B, to make them easier to count. C, to prevent biofilm formation. D, to keep them ready for immediate use. Answer, C, to prevent biofilm formation. What is the procedure for handling instruments used in a procedure with a patient suspected of having Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD? A. Immediate sterilization. B. Discard after use. C. Follow hospital procedures for initial cleaning and containment for transport. D. Clean with alcohol wipes only. Answer. C. Follow hospital procedures for initial cleaning and containment for transport. What safety equipment should CS technicians wear when transporting contaminated items? A. Heat-resistant gloves. B. Sterile gown. C. Standard gloves and possibly other personal protective equipment, PP, as required. D. No additional equipment needed. Answer, C, standard gloves and possibly other personal protective equipment, PP, as required. Which of the following is true regarding the pre-cleaning of flexible fiber optic endoscopes? A, only air should be suctioned through the scope suction channel. B, water and enzymatic solution should be suctioned through the scope suction channel. C, the shaft should not be wiped down after the procedure. D. High-level disinfection is recommended immediately after use without pre-cleaning. Answer. B. Water and enzymatic solution should be suctioned through the scope suction channel. How should instruments with sharp points or edges, like scalpels and needles, be handled to minimize injury risk? A. Placed with other instruments in the same tray. B. Stored without any special considerations. C placed in a separate container. D. Cleaned immediately by hand. Answer. C. Placed in a separate container. What is recommended for preventing biofilm formation on instruments before cleaning? A. Letting instruments dry out completely. B. Placing instruments in a dry environment. C. Keeping instruments moist. D. Applying a thin coat of oil. Answer. C. Keeping instruments moist. When transporting soiled instruments, which type of cart minimizes the risk of cross-contamination? A. Open carts without covers. B. Carts with a solid bottom shelf and cover. C. Any cart available, as long as it moves smoothly. D. Carts designated only for clean supply transport. Answer, B. Carts with a solid bottom shelf and cover. What is the primary purpose of separating sharp disposable components from reusable ones? A. To make the cleaning process faster. B. To reduce the risk of injuries from sharps. C. To save costs on disposable items. D. To improve the efficiency of sterilization. Answer. B. To reduce the risk of injuries from sharps. Why should heavy items be placed at the bottom of a transport tray? A. To prevent damage to lighter instruments. B. To make the tray easier to carry. C. To improve the aesthetics of the tray setup. D. To reduce the time needed for cleaning. Answer A. To prevent damage to lighter instruments. For instruments used in a case with suspected or confirmed Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD, what is the next step after use? A. Immediate disposal of the instruments. B. Specialized cleaning in the operating room. C. Notification of the CS department and infection control. D. Autoclaving at a higher than normal temperature. Answer, C, notification of the CS department and infection control. What should be done if the contaminated device has a reusable fluid container? 
A. Leave the fluid for the CS department to handle. B. Empty the fluids and dispose of them according to facility protocols. C. Reuse the fluid for cost-saving measures. D. Store the container sealed until processing. Answer B. Empty the fluids and dispose of them according to facility protocols. Which of the following is an essential part of education for all who may contact contaminated items? A. The cost of instruments to ensure careful handling. B. The history and development of sterilization technology. C. Proper handling and the correct application of PPE. D. The administrative process for reporting lost instruments. Answer. C. Proper handling and the correct application of PPE. In the context of transporting soiled instruments, why is immediate transport to the CS decontamination area recommended? A. To reduce the workload on CS technicians. B. To minimize the chance for soil to dry on the instruments, making them harder to clean. C. To ensure the instruments are used in the shortest possible time. D. To avoid taking up space in the operating room. Answer. B. To minimize the chance for soil to dry on the instruments, making them harder to clean.